Hey, what's up? Last week, I was lucky enough to be on vacation in Paris, France, where they have stores that only sell brioche. Take a look at the brioche dough at one of these shops. It's insanely buttery looking, probably like 40% butter. And guess what? It tasted very good. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to make insanely buttery brioche dough, and then two ways to make that into a proper finished French brioche. To get started, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'm gonna measure 100 grams of warm water, 10 grams of instant yeast, and make sure to stir that yeast to dissolve because the first mix of this dough is quite dry and it's gonna have a hard time hydrating the yeast properly. Behind that comes 60 grams of sugar, two large eggs, 460 grams of all-purpose flour, and 11 grams of salt. The dough hook goes on, and now I'm gonna mix this on low speed for three to four minutes. No butter is gonna go into this mixer yet. We need to mix everything together first to get a little bit of gluten development going on before we add all that fat. Speaking of which, fat does two things to this dough that I wanna to talk to you real quick. The first is that it inhibits gluten development, meaning that we have to mix this dough a lot for it to be able to stand up in the oven. And the second thing it does is slow down yeast production. We're using 10 grams of instant yeast for 460 grams of all-purpose flour, and that is a lot of yeast. Once the doughs come together into a dry mass like this, now we're gonna need this for another 30 seconds or so in this mixer to gain a little bit of additional strength. And then I'm gonna grab 230 grams of softened butter. I'm using unsalted grass-fed butter for this recipe because it's very flavorful, but don't sweat it. Regular grocery store unsalted butter will also work. I've cut the butter into roughly half-inch size chunks so that I can add them in while the mixer's running on low speed one piece at a time. And I want to mention, take your time here adding in this butter. If you add in too much butter at once, the overall mix time is going to end up taking quite a bit longer, and it's not a given that this will come together as planned later on. So, Go slow. Once all that butter is added in, it's starting to get combined with the dough like this. We're gonna move the mixer to high speed and mix this for a long time, basically. It took me an average of about 15 minutes to take this dough from this sticky, not very well combined mess into a good finished dough. From this point forward, there's basically three stages of mixing purgatory to get through before we get to something that is as pretty as the stuff was in Paris. The first is where the dough hook kind of spins around in the middle a lot. That takes about three to four minutes to get through. And then in the second stage, the dough has strength and just enough to be gripped by the hook, but now it looks kind of like thick batter and it's gonna be there for like four to five more minutes. Halfway through that stage though, come back and scrape down the sides at least once to make sure that that dough is still being grabbed properly by the hook. In the third stage, the dough should start to clear the bowl and finally start slapping around. And from this point, we're gonna mix three to four more minutes to develop the gluten we need for this 46% butter bread to hold itself up properly. Now to test this dough to see if it's mixed enough, we're gonna flip it up and give it a side solid tug. As you can see, it holds itself together well and it doesn't tear. That's done. Now, from here, I'm gonna flip this dough over into a medium bowl and then come back with my hand around this into a nice taut little ball. I'm gonna be pulling and stretching this dough over itself to build just a little bit more strength into it before we ferment. There we go. Now the lid goes on and I'm gonna let this rise here on the counter for one hour. One hour later, this dough is just about doubled in size and it's holding itself together really nicely. Now I'm gonna move this covered bowl over into the fridge and let the butter firm up and let the dough continue to develop more flavor for at least two hours, but preferably 24 hours. If you're wondering, hey, Bri, why can't I just shape this thing right now? I'm not really a waiting guy, my Bri. Well, you could definitely shape it right away, but the butter being at room temperature is gonna make things pretty slick and the dough is gonna be kind of hard to handle. There's also a good chance that the final product would be a little bit greasy, so my recommendation is to use the fridge like me. Now, while this dough chills overnight, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Juneshine. Juneshine is a boozy kombucha that's super refreshing, low sugar, and full of probiotics. Lauren and I have picnicked a lot in 2021 and Juneshine has been the perfect drink for it. It's low ABV, like 6%, so it's super sessionable, and it doesn't leave me with a headache like wine or beer sometimes do. It's actually been kind of a game changer because unlike white wine, which is usually my outdoor drink of choice, Juneshine still allows me to be productive later in the day instead of being a sleepy, crabby boy on the couch. Juneshine isn't just low sugar though. There's actually stuff in there that is good for you, like green tea and honey. Both of those together give Juneshine a smoother, less harsh acidic edge that tastes better than other hard kombuchas in my experience, but it's also a lot easier on my stomach. So to give Juneshine a try, click the link in my description, use code CHEF20 to get any of Juneshine's best-selling variety packs, 20% off 
plus free shipping. Don't miss the Hopical Citrus or the Midnight Painkiller. Both of those flavors are super delicious. 20% off with free shipping, link in the description. Thank you, Juneshine. 24 hours later, when I pull this dough out of cold storage, it really has not gassed up that much more in the fridge, but it has developed a lot more flavor and the butter has fully firmed up. Now to shape this, I'm gonna flour the dough, then my board, then I'm gonna flip out the dough. From there, I'm gonna press this thing out to get it just a little bit more flat like this. And now I'm gonna grab my dough card and cut this into four roughly equal size pieces. Next, I'm gonna move three of these out of the way and then grab one to roll out. I'll press it down to flatten it just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna roll this triangle shaped dough back towards me, starting with the narrower tip. This part's kind of like shaping a baguette, but remember it's half butter. So it's gonna be way firmer and a lot more malleable. Once I got this into a tube shape like this, I'm gonna roll it out a little bit wider until I get a longer tube that has an even thickness from edge to edge. And it's about 18 inches or 45 centimeters in length. As you roll it out, try and apply even pressure so you don't taper the ends too much. I kind of have a bad habit of baguettifying anything tubular that I roll out, but don't be like me. Keep the ends as blunt as you can get them. And that looks pretty good. Once I've got four relatively uniform 18 inch tubes, now I'm gonna lay them down next to each other with no space in between. Get them all snugged up in there. From there, it's time to braid. Starting with the left outermost tube, we're gonna lift and lay that over the second tube sitting next to it. Then we're gonna grab the third tube and go under that one, adjust everything as needed here. These tubes really need to stay in tight contact with each other. Lastly, we're gonna go over top of the fourth tube that was over, then under, then over. It's really pretty simple. And then we're gonna repeat this with the second tube that's gonna go over, then under, then over, and make sure that things are tucked up tightly as you go. Then we're gonna braid this two more times. If you had 18 inch tubes to start, you should easily get four nice chunky braids. From there, of course, we're gonna be left with some loose ends that need tying up. So for those, same deal. The tube on the outside goes over the first one, then under and kind of over the last one. If you can get it, then tuck everything up underneath the best you can to hide the mess. Look at that. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the top. This time we're gonna start with the right outermost tube and yeah, over, under, whatever you get it. Now we're gonna tuck that up and give everything a little bit of a zhuzh to make sure that this mass is distributed evenly from end to end. And there you go, braided brioche. That's looking pretty spiffy, dude. Now I'm gonna grab my one and a half pound loaf pan. I'll link to this one in the description and I'm gonna hit that with some pan spray. Then a little alley-oop and the loaf goes in. Wow, this looks pretty whimsical sitting in this pan, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty stoked. It turns out that the bry guy can braid. Okay, I'm gonna cover this pan with another bread pan or use a tea towel if that's what you got. And then I'm gonna let this proof here on the counter for about three hours. Now, if you wanna take the same dough and turn it into some brioche buns, I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Same moves as before. I've got my overnight dough here. I'm gonna flip it out, flatten it out. And then from there, I'm gonna divide it into eight 110 gram size pieces. Once I've got eight 110 grammers like this, I'm gonna grab a half sheet tray lined with parchment paper and then give that a little dose of spray. Rolling these out is gonna be just a little bit different than a regular burger bun. Since the butter is cold, we're gonna need to flatten this dough out with our palms, then fold in the edges the best that we can. From there, we're gonna flip this over and then start to roll this out normally like we would for a burger style bun. I'm using my palm and my fingertips here to stretch out and tuck under the dough to get a little bit of tension. And there we go, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna press it down to flatten it out and then move it over to the sprayed tray. I'm laying six around the outside here and then two buns in the middle. Once these are all shaped and laid out, we're gonna cover this sheet tray with another sheet tray and let this rise just like we did for the braided loaf for about three hours. Three hours later, when I check back on my braided loaf, it's just about doubled in size and is now filling about 85% of this one and a half pound pan. Now to bake this, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350F 176C while I get some egg wash ready for this bread. To make that egg wash, I cracked one egg into a small container and then added about 15 grams of water, whisk it up and now, it's egg wash. Using a silicone brush, I'm gonna liberally layer this egg wash all over the top side. Once it's all brushed up with egg like this, now I'm gonna load it into a preheated oven and bake it for about 45 minutes. My first three to four attempts at baking this brioche were at higher temperatures, 375, 400, 425 F, all because I'm a bad boy and I really like to bake it dark, as you guys know, but the result across the board was a dry, tough, overly brittle crust that was not soft in the way that it should be. So I went with a gentler lower temp. 
After 45 minutes in the oven, this brioche is ready to come out. And as you can see, the outside of this loaf is so beautifully glossy and it's a bunch of different shades of yellow and gold. It smells buttery, it looks buttery, and when it's proofed and baked properly like this, it's not gonna be too heavy. Now, I'm gonna let this cool down for about five minutes, then pop it out of the pan and let it cool down on a wire rack completely before I cut into it. And I don't wanna forget about you guys who are paying attention to that brioche bun storyline going on earlier in this video. Let's get back to that. After three hours, these buns are nicely proofed up and we're gonna give them a liberal egg wash. Then into the 350F 176C oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. And once they've taken on some nice dark golden brown color like this, we're gonna pull them out. Just like the braided loaf, they're shiny and dark and they smell amazing. They're kind of sweet, they're kind of toasty, and they're definitely dying for some ham and melty cheese. Whether you decide to go for the braided loaf or make some little BB brioche buns, I'm really confident you guys are gonna be quite quite stoked with the result. They're feathery light inside, but they're somehow extremely luxurious and the flavor of that nice grass-fed butter really does come through. I hope you guys give this one a try really soon. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. Let's eat this thing.